Good morning, everyone. How are we doing? Good to see you, man. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Why don't we stand and we'll get started. It's good to see everyone. What a beautiful Southern California nice. morning. Crisp and beautiful, nice, huh? Nice, nice. Praise the Lord. Yep. <laughs> to every life a little... Never mind. <laughs> Let's go ahead and pray. Lord God Almighty, you're a kind and gracious and wonderful God, and we praise you for loving us. Just we're just we don't deserve your goodness, but thank you. So be lifted up and praised in this service. Do your work in our hearts so that we can take you into the world. Mm -hmm. Good. At to work to our areas of our influence, the whole nine yards. And you are a wonderful and a great God. And you deserve all that we can give you. We love and praise you. Be lifted up here and those that are in Facebook land. What a wonderful God you are. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come now. Let's reason together. Come now, yeah. Thus says the Lord. Come now. Let's reason together, yeah. Come now, yeah. Thus says the Lord. Although my sins they'll be scarlet. Sins have made my heart cold. My sins cover me like a garment, but you can make me whole. Oh. Wash me white as snow, Lord. Oh, yeah. Come now, yeah. Let's reason together. Ah, come now, hey. Thus says the Lord. Come now, let's reason together, yeah. Whoa, come now, thus says the Lord. Although my sins, they color me scarlet. Oh, my sins have made my heart cold. My sins cover me like a garment, but you can make me whole. Wash me white. Yes, no, Lord God, wash me down. Here we go. seated if you'd like. Walks not with the 
this world His delight is in you, Lord, and in your word. Meditates night and day. Like a tree standing by the water. Roots are deep, branches strong, and in you there's nothing we can't do. Blessed is the man, blessed is the man who walks not with this world. But his delight is in you, Lord, and in your word, meditates night and day. Blessed is the man who walks not with this world. But his delight is in you, Lord, and in your word, meditates night and day. Like a tree, tended by the water. Roots are deep, branches strong, and in you there's nothing we can do. Thank you. 
us from our sins Then took your place At the right hand of the Father Higher than the angels Greater than all names Forever you will reign Your throne, O oh God, endure Jesus. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Come on, join me. <laughs> Amen. That, that was the good Lord intervening right there. <laughs> Amen. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Amen. Man, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. <laughs> All these smiling faces. Mm. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Amen. Hey, those of you uh, joining us from the internet, from home, or wherever you may be, uh, we welcome you as well. Hope you have, have a blessed morning as well. And wish you were here, but hey, at least you're uh, getting the word uh, somehow, right? Amen. All right. Hey, just a quick reminder, cell phones, if you have not done so, please take the opportunity to silence those cell phones. Wow, I see about eight of you. <laughs> Even pastor, love it. <laughs> We appreciate the understanding on that. Amen. Hey, a Blessed Be Blessed Food Ministry, third Friday of each month, so uh, that will make it this coming Friday. Uh, again, please text, call, get yourself an appointment. Things flow a lot smoother and better that way. We appreciate that. Hey, just a reminder, as next Friday as well, the youth will be leaving for their youth retreat, so, you know, we, uh, we applaud them and, and pray that they uh, have an enjoyable time, amen, and, uh, you know, come back fresh, right, and, you know, amen. Prayer meeting, Saturday, April 20th, here in the sanctuary, 9 to 9.30, so as we've always said, you know, please, if you have the time, we encourage you to come on down for that hour, pray, pray what's on your heart, Lay it at the Lord's feet, and uh, you're with brothers and sisters, so commonly your prayer is very similar to somebody else's, so you're not alone, amen? All right. Hey, ladies, spring gathering is coming up. Uh, that is April 27th, 10 a.m. Uh, Sign-ups are in the lobby for this. Uh, you can see Connie as well for more information. And then the ladies are doing a, a retreat. It is titled Calling All Ladies. There are sign-ups in the lobby for that as well. That will be going on in May, the 24th through the 25th of May. Uh, ladies, uh, I encourage you to get plugged in with fellow sisters and 
and enjoy some good time with the Lord and ladies. Amen. Mm-hmm. Hey, just a reminder, hiking with Thomas. Uh, I don't believe he's here at the moment, but there are signups in the lobby. Uh, get with myself if you have trouble locating the uh, clipboards, and we will help you there. Prayer at Harupa Valley Sheriff Station every Thursday morning, 9 to 9.30 by the flagpole. So if you are available to be there to pray for those brave souls, uh, that would be great. They, they see it, they recognize it, and I'm sure they appreciate it. Amen? With that being said, shall we pray for our tithes and offerings? Oh, heavenly gracious Father, oh, what a loving Father you are, dear Lord. We are just so blessed oh, to have you as our Lord, our Savior, dear Lord. Oh, it just doesn't get any better than that, dear Lord. We thank you. We love you for all that you provide. We ask that you bless the service as it begins with Pastor Greg, the worship, the congregation. It just goes on, dear Lord. We are so grateful again. So we thank you, we love you, and all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Praise you again and again 
Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not much I'm nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing hallelujah God, we do. We honor and worship you, and we praise you for your kindness and magnificence. So as we continue on in the service, continue to keep our hearts open and help us to grow, and we love you in Jesus' name. It is wonderful to be back. I had a chance last week to go see my daughter, my 40-year-old daughter, get baptized, and it was a very emotional and wonderful time. Thank you. Praise the Lord. God was good, but I'll tell you what, it was as much as wonderful as it was last week. It's even better this week because me and Sherry are back. So praise the Lord. We're going to be uh, reading out of the book of Psalm 108. So please stand if you would. Um, The the psalm is up on the board. We're going to be, if you don't like reading on the board, it's we're in New King James Version, Psalm 108. I'll do the odd verses, you do the even. O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Awake, lute and harp, I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O Lord, among the people, and I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your mercy is great above the heavens, and your truth reaches to Christ. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory above all the earth. That your beloved may be delivered, save with your right hand, and hear me. God has spoken in his holiness, and I will rejoice. I will divide Shechem and measure out the valley of Sukkoth. Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the helmet for my head. Judah is my lawgiver. Moab is my washpot. Over Edom I will cast my shoe. Over Felicia I will triumph. Who will lead me to Edom? It is not for you, O God, who cast us off, and you, O God, who did not go with our armies. Give us help from trouble, for the help of man is useless. And altogether, though though God, God, we will do valiantly, for for it is he who will tread down down our enemies. enemies. Amen. Praise the Lord. And as the bombs are literally dropping on Israel, we need to be reminded and pray that our friends recognize that strength is in the Lord and Him him only, Him and Him alone. And so what a blessing. And so, Father, we do thank you uh, for the opportunity to lift up our brethren and we ask you, Lord God, to keep them strong, keep their families strong, Lord. And, and we truly pray, Lord, for the hostages that have been taken now and have been held for months. And we just trust in you, Lord God. So allow your will to be done. But we pray, Lord God, that this foolishness, because people are trying to stick their finger in your eye, Lord God, as they desire to disrespect Israel and and literally wipe Israel off the map. We ask you, Lord God, to continue to have your way and strengthen us. Strengthen the human race, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any young people that are still in here are dismissed. You can go to your class and praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen to that. Let's hold them high this morning, shall we? Let's be reminded of what we believe and let our... I believe that in the volume of this book speaks about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I desire not only to read it and to know it, but through the power of God's Holy Spirit to live it. Amen? Praise the Lord, the power of God's Holy Spirit. Join me in 1 Peter. 1 Peter. First Peter chapter 1. And as you're turning to 1 Peter, let's be reminded 
that the Apostle Peter is speaking to the saints. He made that very clear in his salutation to his brethren, saying, guys and gals, you are men and women of the Lord. Sometimes, sometimes we need to be reminded of that, don't we? <laughs> it's okay, but it's good to be able to be reminded that we are God's chosen, a royal priesthood. And so we want to allow the Lord to be revealed in and through our lives. We have that one song that we sing is, you know, thank you, Lord, for all the things that you're, you've done for me. And then the next line, thank you, Lord, for all the things you're doing in me. And then finally, to end, end up the thought, to finish the thought, thank you for all the things that you're doing through me. So it starts with what God is doing in us. So what a blessing. So Peter speaking to the saints. Now these saints, we have to be reminded, these saints have been told to leave town. Get out of Jerusalem. Get out. I mean, this is their hometown and surrounding areas, surrounding neighborhoods. This is their hometown. Can you imagine being told to get out? You know, hey, this is our homeland. Well, not anymore. I mean, wow. Previously, and, and maybe it's, it still occurs today, but we had some folks here previously a decade ago that were actually in Europe during the bombing of, in World War II. And the one gal was mentioning, she said, you know, I remember as a kid seeing the Nazi Germany planes overhead dropping bombs, you know, in their native uh, country. And I mean, and I just thought, guy, you know, we've, we've been so blessed here in the United States. Now we've had our challenges, of course. But man, to relate to these saints, Peter is relating to these saints. He says, you know, I know what you're going through. Get out of town, certainly. You know, this is not your town anymore. And we remember in, in, in chapter 1, last time in verse 6, Peter reminds his brethren, yes, you have been grieved by various trials. Yes, I, I understand that. I get it. In other words, Peter is saying, I can relate. I can relate to what's going on. But even though you have been grieved by various trials, I need, Peter says, I need you to gird up your mind in verse 13. Gird up your mind, stand up, stand straight, be sober. Be ready. Keep things in perspective. Peter kept bringing his brethren to the reality that this is going to pass. And all too often we start thinking, oh, this is, this is it. I mean, how many times have you heard someone say, that, that's it, this, it's over. Like this is our eternity. That's it. All is lost. And Peter is reminding, I mean, certainly that sort of attitude is going on right here, uh, right now, in, in, as, as Peter is addressing his audience. Certainly they're thinking, oh, you know, you know this is it. It's over. And Peter is saying, oh, no, no, no. Keep things in perspective because, you know, how do we keep things in perspective, Peter? Because you're not of this world. That's why. That's why I need you to gird up your mind. That's why I need you to be sober. The body of Christ needs you. We are not islands on our own. It seems to be a badge of honor if we project that, oh, I'm so tough, I can do it all by myself. I mean, every cop show that's on TV or at the movies shows the guy that never, you know, these police officers that never eat and never sleep. I think it's amazing. Wow, I said, wow you are su Superman. You know, I co while Kojak sends everybody home, he stays in the office all night, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. No, that, that's not who we are. You know, that, that's our Hollywood version of who we are. Peter is saying, hey, the body of Christ needs you, so I need you to be sober, man. I need you to gird up your mind. 
I need you. The body of Christ needs you. You are not of this world, and I need you to realize that, recognize that, and understand that, and then eventually begin to articulate that to those around you. That's what I need. That's what Peter is saying. That's what I need. I need that. I need that from you. I need us to join together, being sober-minded and realizing that this is not our world. This, this will pass one way or another. This will pass. So the purpose of Peter's writing is that we, you and I, as born-again believers, but of course writing to the first century believers, the, the, the purpose of Peter's writings is that we are able to reveal Jesus and his love at all times, under any and every circumstance. Not picking and choosing what we want to, when we want to reveal the Lord, when we feel like it, or if we don't feel like it, well, I don't feel very good, so that's why I, you know, I'm going to justify why I, why I acted this way. There's no justification for acting foolishly. None. None, not at all. We are to reveal Jesus and his love at all times, no matter what the circumstances are, no matter who it is that we're dealing with. I mean, that... That doesn't, come, that doesn't come easy, and it's totally impossible if we're not living a spirit-filled life. Completely impossible if we're not spirit-filled. Completely impossible. We need to be committed, committed to the Lord, committed to the refreshing of the Holy Spirit on a moment-by-moment basis. I mean, multiple times throughout the day, especially the first time when we open our eyes. And that's what we did this morning. We opened our eyes this morning and we said, thank you, Lord. Fill me with your spirit. And that's what we said. Now that attitude has to follow us, and it does. It follows us throughout the day. It does. Peter reminded us and reminded his audience, and of course we apply it to our own lives. Peter reminded, be holy in all conduct remembering you are his. Be holy in all conduct, remembering you are his, because, picking up at verse 22, be holy in all conduct, remembering you are his, because you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you, of course, for Jesus as our salvation, and then we thank you that your promise of the Helper is here with us. The Helper, God the Holy Spirit. So we thank you. Spirit of God, speak to us and then speak through us this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit. We didn't do anything on our own. We can't take any credit. We just obeyed. We just obeyed God the Holy Spirit. That's all we've done. And in that, the Lord says, you've purified yourself because you submitted yourself to God, the Holy Spirit. He is able to purify your souls. So we opened, all we did is we opened up the door. So don't let let yourself get sidetracked with verse 22. Well, this is what I've done. No, the only thing you've done is you've not grieved God, the Holy Spirit. We can grieve him. You know that. We can grieve him. We can say no to God, the Holy Spirit. It's very simple. What's the first word any of your kids or grandkids learned? Oh, imagine that. How about that? Now, did you teach them that word? I doubt it. (laughs) They didn't need any help. They figured it out. You know? No. (laughs) I was just over at Sam and Sherry's last night, and there was a whole brood of kids. And they were all going 17 different directions. <laughs> it was a crack up. And as well, Connie and I, we've been enjoying a, what, we, what we call the, you know, the empty nest syndrome for a couple of years. And it's been great, believe me. I mean, we needed, a, you know, we needed some time alone and things. And we've just had a great, great time. But then the other day, it hit me. I saw a bunch of those magnetic uh, alphabet uh, letters on the refrigerator. Right? You know what I'm saying, right? I haven't seen that for years. 
I mean, you know, Bo and Margo, of course, are adults and they have their own kids, but now I have their kids at my house. And so it was a crack up seeing those little, you know, the alphabet laid out, you know, little words uh, uh, spelled out and things on the, on the refrigerator. And it just hit me. I said, man, Lord, you know, it's been up for weeks and weeks and maybe months, but I thought, man, Lord, I kind of miss that. You know, I saw it. It just it went ding, hello. I was like, yeah, that's cool. I embrace that again. It's great having the kids over now, the grandkids. And it's a crack up. And so we don't, as, as children of God, we don't say no to the Lord, although we do. <laughs> but Peter's saying, you have allowed God the Holy Spirit to purify your soul because you've obeyed. You've heard the desire of God the Holy Spirit. He wants to work within you, and you have allowed him to do that. And again, we have the power to say no, and that's a terrible thing. I wish we didn't have that power, but we do. We have a choice. We have a choice in many things in life. How is it that we choose? Do we choose well, or do we choose foolishly? Well, it's, it's, it's a toss-up. I mean, sometimes we do well, and other times we do real dumb, dumb things. And so all Peter is saying, hey, you've purified your, your souls and he's qualifying it because it's the Holy Spirit that's purified your soul. But you purified your souls by obeying the truth through the Spirit. So it's all, it's all God. It's nothing that you've done. But again, you've opened up your heart gate, if you will. You've done that. You've done that. So Peter's reminding his friends, hey, you're purified. You are men and women of God. You are, because you're, you've submitted yourself to the direction of your teacher, God the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. And you've demonstrated that in the second part of verse 22. You've demonstrated this by demonstrating your sincere love of the brethren. Before you came to Christ, and I'm speaking to everyone, before you came to Christ, you didn't like people that well. Oh, you used people in many different ways. And don't tell me, oh, I really love people because, you know, I have all these girlfriends and I have this going on I have that. Oh, yeah, I really love people. No, you don't. You didn't. You do now. But prior to Christ, you didn't like people very well. You didn't. I know that as a fact because I used to hang around with you in your old, old ways. <clears throat> But now Peter is saying, because you've allowed God the Holy Spirit to work in your life, it's being demonstrated by your sincere love of the brethren. It's demonstrated by your love of the brethren. So continue to love one another fervently with a pure heart. No deceitful motives which before we were full of, we got really good at being deceitful, really well. But now we, we love one another fervently with a pure heart. Peter is reminding, this is what you're, what you're doing in your life. You have changed. God, the Holy Spirit, has changed you. And Peter wants to draw that attention to his audience because right now they're thinking, what good is anything? Say, hey, man, you've been loving the brethren. You've affected your families in a good way. You've affected your neighborhood in a good way. Now, yes, you're going through some various trials right now. Yes, but God has his hand on you. You love one another fervently with a pure heart, verse 23, because you have been born again. That's why you now love, because you've been born again. Again, you've been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. Not by your efforts, by your desires, by your counting to ten, by your taking ten steps and saying, gee, this is what I'm going to do now. No, you've, you've been born again, not of corruptible see, seed, but incorruptible. Born again through the word of God, which, li which lives and abides forever. You and I, and, and Peter's audience, has, has been born again through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. As we sang this morning, God, you abide forever. Your word abides forever. Hey, let's face it, the gospel of John, verse 
chapter 1, verse 1, John starts off and says, Hey, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So in other words, so in the beginning was the Word. It didn't come, come along later. In the beginning, God is eternal. And so the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and on the contrary, in verse 24, all flesh is grass. Okay, well, that's interesting. What does that mean? And the glory of man is as the flower of the grass, right? But Peter goes on with his thought, the grass withers, and its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. That's what Peter's talking about. The word of the Lord endures forever. You know, Isaiah 40, chapter 40, verses 6 and 8, Peter is referring to. The word of the Lord endures forever. Our efforts are limited. But the word of the Lord is forever. Now this, this word that lives forever, Peter goes on to say, this word that lives forever, this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. This word is the gospel. This word is the good news that has been preached to you. So in reality, chapter, uh, in chapter 1, verse 6, during these Various trials, in these trials, we rejoice. In these trials. Because the word, the good news was preached to us and we've received it. Therefore, we can endure. Therefore, we can and will and do gird up our minds. Therefore, we are sober because the, the everlasting word has been preached and taught to us. Therefore, we apply it. That's all Peter is saying. He's lifting up his brethren. And so in our trials, hey, Peter is saying to his audience, in your trials, greatly rejoice. You have the ability to do so. So choose to do so. Choose to do so. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, Laying aside all hypocrisy, all envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Peter is really letting people look in the mirror, if indeed you've tasted. Look in the mirror, have you tasted? I mean, that's between you and the Lord. I'm not pointing any fingers or anything like that. But have, you know, Peter is asking, if indeed you've been touched by the Lord, if indeed you have tasted the Lord is gracious, have that desire to mature. Have that desire to be men and women of leadership. Peter simply quoting Psalm, Psalm 34, verse 8, the psalmist tells us, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste. It's free to taste. It's okay. It costs you nothing. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And absolutely, and it's, and it's been a reminder to me as Connie is leading the women of the word here at Calvary Chapel in Hebrews, you know, she got to eventually uh, is going to be teaching Hebrews chapter 6. And the writer is writing to a group of people that had tasted and seen that the Lord is good and they came to Christ but over time they decided to go back those that had tasted and seen decided to go back and they're not going to come out of their ritual filled life and the writer is speaking in a generality those that have left Christ and gone back to their own devices more than likely, they're not going to return to Christ ever again. Because how do you taste and see and enjoy the Lord for a particular amount of time and then one day say, oh, gee, I'm bored with that. I'm done with that. 
I'm going to go back to my old ways. And that's what the writer is saying. He's not speaking that, you know, hey, I stumbled and I guess I can never come back to Christ. That's been misinterpreted and mistaught, misrepresented by many pulpits. It's the folks that said, you know what, I, and you've heard this before, you know, I, I, I've, I, I've tried the Lord, but it, it just doesn't work for me. Those are the people that the writer of Hebrews is talking about. They're going to walk away from the Lord. They have walked away from the Lord. And it wouldn't appear that they're coming back. And so it's, it is, it's too late for them. And so Peter is saying, hey, he's really asking a question. Have you tasted and seen the Lord is gracious? Have you? I mean, if you haven't, we can fix that today. You know, right now, you know, right this moment, Peter said, it's okay. I mean, if you, ha if you haven't tasted, then now's the time. Come and see that the Lord is good. Come. Today. Are you backslidden? Well, don't remain in that condition. Don't remain. Get out of that condition today. Don't be playing around. Taste and see that the Lord is good. So have you tasted? I mean, Peter is, is, is making sure, hey, am I speaking? To, you know, got, I speak to a lot of groups. And, you know, this letter is going to go out to a lot of people and be read in a lot of synagogues. Well, is everyone in earshot? Have, they, have you tasted and seen? Peter doesn't know all these people personally. Oh, he knows people in a general fashion, sure. But he wants to make sure, hey, have you tasted and seen? I don't know. You need to look in the mirror of Scripture. When you open up Scripture, do you find yourself? Do you find yourself in the good graces of the Lord? That's all Peter's asking. Taste and see that the Lord is good. In verse 4, he continues on with that theme. In verse 4, you come to Him as to a living stone. Now this living stone originally has been rejected by men. This living stone has been rejected, but chosen by God. So we can either listen to what mankind tells us about Jesus, or we can listen and read and study the Word of God and find out what God says about Jesus. I mean, it, again, it's, it's up to us. Raising our kids, I told them very clearly as they were youngsters, I said, hey, you guys have choices in this house. You truly do. You can choose to follow my direction and your mom's direction. You can choose to do that. And you know what? As you choose to follow our direction, man, your day is going to go great. Woohoo! But you also get the choice to deny my and your mom's direction. You get to choose that, but your day is going to be rotten. Promise. I will meet you right where you're headed. I'm going to be there before you get there. I'm going to be waiting on you. And it won't go well. So we get to choose. I mean, the Lord has shown me His graciousness through my own kids. Hey, Greg, you get to choose. Well, okay, Lord. Well, Lord, would you help me choose well? I'd be delighted to. Speak to the helper. I will. <laughs> Man, my, you know, my life is just good. Every time I get up in the morning, I walk around my, my house and look out in my neighborhood. And I think, Man, Lord, I've got it made. I've got it good. And then the devil wants to come up and say, Well, what about this, this, that, and the other thing, and this and, and that? And like, you know what? I'll let you worry about that, Satan. I'm following Jesus. Amen. We've got our trials, all of us. But you know what? These trials have been overcome by the finished work of Jesus Christ. Man, hallelujah. Thank God. And let's face it, we're one week closer to heaven, right? Today marks, marks that, that today. We are one week closer to heaven. So man, again, how do you not look out the window and go, man, praise the Lord, Father God, great. So you, you, have you come to him as a living stone? This living stone was rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You, my audience, Peter writing to, you also as living stones are currently being built up a spiritual house. 
It's current. It's ongoing. You're being built up as a holy priesthood in order to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable through, to God through Jesus Christ. That's what our job is, is to represent the Lord as we open up this study this morning. We want to represent the Lord the best possible way we can. And so we got we to gotta read Scripture. Lord, what do you want? What would you like? Lord? What would you like from me, Lord God? Because now we come into the presence of a holy God through the, through the blood of Jesus Christ, and he accepts us. He said, hey, come in. Come into the Holy of Holies as we're looking Wednesday night through the book of Ezekiel, and the angel is describing to Ezekiel the dimensions of the Holy of Holies. And Ezekiel, even though he was a priest, but not a high priest at the time, he was not even allowed in his vision to go into the Holy of Holies. Only the high priest could go in. One guy could go into the Holy of Holies. Now, as the finished work of Jesus Christ is over, that curtain has been rend from top to bottom. We are now, as born-again believers, we are now encouraged to come in to the Holy of Holies, the throne of grace. I will praise you, God, through the cross of Jesus. To your throne of grace I approach. But I approach with fear, but yet filled with love. I mean, he's holy and I'm not, so man, that makes my knees buckle a little bit. I don't know about you, maybe you have a more casual relationship with the holy God, but I'm a little careful when I come into the presence of God. I know I'm welcome, but I let his glory be revealed first, and man, that buckles my knees, and I know it buckles yours also, but I'm instantly lifted up and invited, no, come, you, you belong here. We get it. We get the context. We are being built up as a holy priesthood in order to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore. Are you starting to recognize the therefores? We're only partway through chapter 2. And we've had several therefores. I mean, Peter is giving us the script and saying, hey, this is what should be going on in your life. And once it is, then, therefore, this is what has to happen. So once again, therefore, in verse 6, therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. So as, as, the, his, as Peter's audience has been scattered, they're starting to wonder, what have we done wrong? What, you know, where did we goof up? What's happening? And, and Peter's saying, oh no, you didn't do anything wrong. You've done nothing wrong. But you're going to take this good news message and you're going to take it outside the walls of Jerusalem. I promise you that's what you're going to do. And so Peter is bringing that encouragement to those that are bewildered at this time, thinking, what? Peter's saying, oh, no, 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 don't focus on that. You keep your eyes focused on God. As he's given you that vision through the finished work of Jesus, you keep your eyes on Jesus. Therefore, once again, therefore, to you who believe he is precious, but to those who were disobedient, to your non-believing acquaintances, even those folks that are trying to make you stumble in your walk, to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and also has become a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense as Isaiah speaks to us in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 16. You and I have received the stone and we have fallen on the stone and allowed our lives to be broken. Allowed our pride to be broken and shattered. 
allowed our worldly living to be broken and shattered as we fall on the living stone. We allow all those fleshly activities to be broken and shattered because we've fallen upon the rock. Now others are going to allow the stone to fall on them and be crushed into the dust. Big difference. Voluntarily falling on the stone or rebelling, shaking our fist, and finally the stone just falls on that person. How sad. How terribly sad. And as we begin to close, Peter goes on to say, they stumble. Those that have rejected Christ, they stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. Everyone has an opportunity to to receive Jesus Christ. Everyone. But again, as I told my kids, hey, you get a choice. You know, guess what they're doing now? Guess what my kids are doing now with my grandkids? They're giving them that choice, likewise. Hey, you want to have a good day? Here you go, check right here. It's simple. It's going to be simple. Those disbelievers, they stumble being disobedient. Verse 9, but you born-again believers, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's you now. You once were not a people, but now are now the people of God who had not obtained mercy previously, but now, today, you have obtained mercy. Oh, man. Is it any wonder why we go around singing in our heads all day long, oh, happy day? No, it's not a wonder at all. Oh, happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. Oh, happy day. What an absolute blessing. What an encouraging letter from Peter to the scattered saints of the first century. I mean, they, they, had, they didn't know what, what to do. You know, we don't understand this. And Peter is explaining what's going on. And they're starting to settle down a little bit. Hey, this is from the Apostle Peter. Yeah, you you remember the the guy that walked and talked and ate with Jesus. Yeah, that guy. Oh, yeah. Well, he's got plenty to say. And man, I'm anxious to hear. Hey, me too. Let's get to synagogue right away. As the overseers, as the teaching eldership begin to read this letter of Peter's to encourage us. Oh, can't wait to hear more of this good news. Amen? Next time, as you read ahead, next time we glorify God through our lives. Glorifying God through our lives. Amen? Let that be a reference to your upcoming week as you read ahead. Am I glorifying God through my my life? Time for an inventory. Amen? What an absolute blessing. If I could invite the worship team up and join me. We've seen this morning that the scattered saints have been reminded that he who believes on Jesus will by no means be put to shame. Do you fall in that category? Do you fall into a shameless life? I mean, there's conviction, certainly. We get convicted. I I shouldn't do that. Oh, that's a conviction. But the enemy wants to come in and, and bring what we call condemnation. Oh, you did that. That's it. You can never return. Hebrews chapter 6 tells you that. You, you stumbled, so that's it. You're, you've done. You've tasted and seen. You've, you've stumbled, and that, that's the end of it. So you can't go back. That's, that's a condemnation. God does not condemn. If you're alive and breathing today, I trust. I, don't, I see people kind of moving around a little bit. If your neighbor's stone cold, let the ushers know, and we'll get that taken care of right away. But if you're alive and breathing today, and you feel condemned 
come up this morning and find redemption, get back to where maybe you used to be, and you know, you just, you know I, just, I just don't feel God, I, I don't feel this, or I don't feel that, enough with your feelings anymore. We just finished the resurrection of Jesus. He, behold, he is risen. Death could not hold him down. And we rejoice in the resurrection of Jesus Christ as Matthew directs us. If you need that reminder, come up this morning, man. We'd be glad to embrace you. Glad, we're excited. We're, we're desirous to embrace you. We've got the, the prayer team here, myself and our elder Sam. We'd be glad to embrace you. Praise the Lord. So after the service, come on up. Secondly, if you, know, if you need Jesus Christ today, if you've never accepted Jesus, today's your day. Come up this morning. Come up today and say, man, I need to understand how I need to accept Jesus so I can have a happy day. And again, come up after the service. Come up and join us. We'll be glad through Scripture to walk you through a very simple path. God's plan of receiving His grace and His mercy. God's plan, not mine, not Sam's, not the Calvary Chapel's plan. God's plan. Praise the Lord. And so therefore, we're going to lay aside all malice, all deceit, all hypocrisy, all envy, and all evil speaking. That's how we demonstrate that we're born again. It's these simple revelations and change in our lives. Amen? Very simple. Join us by standing, and once again, after the service, come join us and check in. And we'll be glad to get you back on the road, and it'll be great. Secondly, a friendly reminder, leadership meeting after the second service. We'll see you then. Sam's going to give us the blessing. Receive it wholeheartedly because it's yours. Amen? God is good. Thank you, Lord. The Lord bless thee. The Lord bless thee. And keep thee. And keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee. The Lord bless thee. The Lord bless thee. And keep thee. And keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and, and be gracious unto thee and be gracious unto thee the lord lift up the lord lift up his countenance his countenance upon, upon thee and give thee Amen. Hey, God bless you guys. Have a great rest of the day. Amen. Hi, everybody. Pastor Greg, Calvary Chapel, Harupa Valley. Hey, we're so glad that you've been enjoying the videos, and we just know that God has been touching you and just giving you a blessing through these teachings. But you know, we'd like to give you a challenge. Since this material is available, as you know, you can go to the website and pull these videos down, but we would like to challenge you. Since you're enjoying these teachings on a regular basis, we want to challenge you, why not share these videos? You've got lots of friends on Facebook and so forth and social media. Why not inject the gospel message, the Bible teachings of, of the Lord into, into your share partners? It would be a great opportunity to maybe start a conversation, but we would really like you to be encouraged and consider passing these teachings on. We want people to be benefited, so let's allow the Lord to do what he would like to do. But in the meantime, we're so glad that you've been join, joining us and enjoying these teachings. They will continue to come as the Lord tarries, but again, enjoy, enjoy the Lord. Thank you so much, and continue to pray for Calvary Chapel here in the city of Harupa Valley. God bless you, Pastor Greg, once again, and we'll catch up with you next time. Have a great week in the Lord. Bye now.